afternoon everyone how are we all doing today it is sunday and the sun is shining outside i'm just in the kitchen because it is later on in the day and um, i did try filming in the front room but because i've had to keep the curtains closed because the sun's blaring in it looked like i was sat in dark so the clouds are slowly getting darker over here but hey up we've enjoyed the sun today i didn't get out of bed till like half 11 uh, this morning because i was up the shattered and i didn't want to get up even though I I woke up with a headache. Have you ever done that? You think, oh, I'll have a good night's sleep tonight because I've not slept very well. Well, I'm one of them that doesn't sleep very well anyway. I'm up and down in the night, but I always try and push that extra sleep a little bit more, but it won't work for me today. Anyway, so I thought I'd do a video of what I thought my life was going to turn out like when I was younger than I did. And now into what it has turned into so hmm. when I was younger obviously I had difficulties with bullying and depression at a very young age um, but I still had ambitions is that what you call it I still wanted to do things that I wanted to achieve in my life um, I didn't know it was going to turn out like this but anyway so my ambitions were to be a paramedic because even though I, my life was dealt with a bad hand, like say with bullying, mental health and so and so when I was younger, I still had that care inside to me and I wanted to help other people when I was older. Obviously, with being a paramedic, you have to learn to drive and that's one thing as well that put kind of stopped me and the college situation because being dyslexic and same with the math situations I thought no one is gonna want to help um, and I didn't know that when I was younger because not a lot of people dyslexic was not talked about when I was younger same with maths and learning difficulties you didn't really see much of that when I was younger um, and never you didn't really hear about it so the thought of going to college really freaked me out because I thought, oh god, if I go to college, they're going to know I can't spell, they're going to know I can't say that word, they're going to know I can't do maths, they're going to, oh my lord, and then anxiety kicked in, and then being around a group of people just freaked me out, so I just put it off. And at that time as well, I was looking after, looking after my mum, like, she had agoraphobia when we were kids as well, then... Whilst we were in school, I stayed on at school, not like my other siblings, <laughs> my joking. I stayed on to year six and I did health and social care, level two. Um, uh, kind of struggled through that year as well. But then I thought, if I do that, can I go to college? Can I do this? Can I do that? Or am I going to help be held back? And I've been held back with that for all my life until recently that I knew that there was support out there. But going back when I was, when I left school, I was, I'd say, uh, 17, I think. I'm not too sure, I can't remember. I went and helped out my local retail shop where my friend did a paper round. Sorry, my son came around distracting me now, I can't remember what I'm talking about. Yeah, my friend worked as a paper girl at the local shop where she lived, and I thought, you know what, I'll see if there's any. Uh, at first, I did it by helping out then I got £50 a week but they took the mick out of me so I'd have to go 6 o'clock in the morning work till 10 then go back in go home for a bit come up back at 2 o'clock and work till 7 50 quid a week I mean that took the car Michael you know what I mean then they took me on full time but they pay me one week and didn't pay me the next it's like you to, then we were too afraid to ask for my wage but then I thought you know stuff this so I looked for another job worked at Burger King where my sister worked at the time because they were taking people on mm, I didn't really enjoy it there I, I like I preferred to be on the dining area where I just cleaned up after everybody I didn't want to work on the tills because like I say I didn't wasn't great at maths either um, so I did that for a while met Olivia not Olivia if you weren't even born then. I met Hannah and Thomas's dad there. Uh, he didn't work there, he'd just come in. Um, he worked at another shop where I, when I 
finish work on a night, I'd call into his shop on the way home. I didn't realise he used to write his number on the back of the receipt for me to uh, think about. I didn't have a mobile phone either, so I could not. And I just threw, once I come out of the shop, I just threw receipts away, so I didn't, I wasn't none the wiser. Um, so that's how I met him. We got talking, and then after about a year, I think I had Hannah, and then I, I was a stay at home mum. I had a bit of baby blues um, and what do you call it? Uh, antenatal depression, I think it's called. Um, then struggled with depression on and off all month, and then I started with like these pain, weird pains, mainly like chest pains. Like thinking about it now, I know what it was. It was the rib inflammation of the ribs, but back then I thought I was an heart attack. So I was in and out of hospital all the time. Um, then, after a few years, I had Thomas, and then I had Baby Blues again. Then we moved to a different home. I uh, didn't, didn't really like it there cause, and stuff like that, because it was like two buses to my mum's and stuff like that. Um, and things were going up, I didn't like the area and stuff like that. And then the, tr the st stress started impacting my body depression then obviously we split up divorce and then that's when it all went wrong depression everything breakdown and oh my lord i'm too scared to ask for help i wasn't aware of the mental health surface back then because i was still in my early 20s and um, yeah didn't really know much about mental health back then Tried to get back on my feet after the split up, but I struggled. It took me a good few years to get over that because obviously I wasn't expecting it. I'm not going to get into it, whose fault, it's my fault, his fault. No, it's no one's fault, it just didn't work out. Anyhow, so then I'm not going to get into every little nitty gritty. I'm just, I'm just trying to think. So, uh, there were a period of time where I was like a bit stable, okay, but the pains were still creeping in and I didn't know where these, why these pains were coming on. I just thought, oh, it's because I'm tired, the fatigue were killing me off, I'm not kidding. Once I dropped the kids off at school, I'd go and have a nap um, and stuff. Um, pains in my legs everywhere were just hurting me. And I didn't, I, I'd never heard of fibro back then, I wasn't diagnosed till, geez, very, very good about. 15 years, I think, but the early signs were there after the breakup because I researched it as well. Fibro can be caused by breakdown of marriage, mental health, blah blah. Um, but things didn't, things weren't getting better for me, and then I thought, you know what, I need a fresh start. Me and kids, we went up and moved to Scotland. <laughs> oh, and that's how I. Oh, and then obviously depression got worse and because my sister up there I thought oh, it'll be fine we'll get you know we'll spend a bit of time together she was in college I looked after the kids while she went to college or work or, and a partner were a police officer at the time so yeah things kind of worked out a little bit well met a good friend of mine up there still keeping contact with her to do it this day I have met up with her last year for a bit 60th went back pool for a 60th um, but Things are like, I oh, was getting emotional pretty quickly. I was, I've always been an emotional person anyway, and sensitive, but my mental health was declining and I, was, I didn't know much about mental health back then. I'm just trying, little flashes are coming up in my head of things that were, you know, has happened. I managed to get a, a part-time Christmas job at Asda, enjoyed that night time killed me off even though I don't sleep very well for the night I thought oh I can do night shifts it's only Christmas period but <laughs> I struggled and then I got the flu so I was like struggling and coughing sneezing and stuff like that um, but yeah I enjoyed that it's one of my one of my favorites sort of retail because I didn't have to do tills it was just stacking shelves however that didn't last because obviously we're on a crisp oh, I keep getting cramp in that part of my hand you know that straight can you see that kink there Ah, cramp. Anyway, so after a couple of years, my mental health declined and uh, I got referred to a community mental health worker and I'm like, what's one of them? Never heard of him. So it's a CPN, community mental health nurse, practitioner, or what you want to call them. Anyway, 
Things were all right. <coughs> Sorry, I don't have a drink. Things were okay, talking things through. Got diagnosed a condition. So yeah, that's how I got in touch with my mental health team for Scotland. And yeah, I, I struggled really badly. I didn't have no, I only had my sister up there. I didn't have no family support. Not really support from my mates either, so. Yeah, not all before I kind of met my Olivia's Hannah. Before I met Olivia's dad as well, because she's related to my friend. Um, but long, um, long story short, I did a few online courses that didn't like childcare and stuff like that. I was going to do that at one point, but I changed my mind because I thought mm -mm, you, all these regulations that you've got in, in your house, you know, child minding. I thought, oh, no, I can't. Uh, just too much of money to even entertain. Anyway, so we moved back down to England for support for my two older children, which then left, obviously, Olivia's dad up in Scotland, but she still kept in contact, still made sure she visited, and I'm not going to get into much of that either. Um, but moved back down here, um, things started declining with my physical health. I kept falling a lot. I was in really like this pain i just couldn't describe it the doctors were like sending me vectors couldn't find out and then one day i just my legs just went and i couldn't i couldn't sit i was like i couldn't walk and i had to ring my niece i said i need some help i haven't got no money for a taxi can you get me to the doctors please uh, and they referred me to go for an x-ray, so I went for an x-ray and that's how I found out I had a slip bulging disc. But I was then referred to someone, another consultant in Leeds uh, for ongoing, I went for MRI I think it was, those big polar mints or CT, I can't remember, but I, I, I'm scared of them things. But long story short, this is where I am now. So after over 10, 15, probably 10, 15 years, I think it's taken that long to get diagnosed. I got diagnosed about three years ago, I think it was. I can't, I'm trying to, no, I got diagnosed, actually. Uh, I've been here five years, five years. So it's taken that long to get a diagnosis of it. Oh, it's okay, it's just fibro, here you go, a leaflet, and there you go, there's not much we can do. As a surgical, they said there's not much we can do unless it comes to the point where you're losing your bowel movements or pee and stuff like that. So that's the only time they can ever actually do not. So I think fibro, you've ruined my life. Uh, and other chronic illnesses I've got and mental health as well. It's not exactly helped. I've got, I mean, I've got the correct support now, but if I had that back then, I think things may might, might be different. I'm not saying I'm touch wood it don't get any worse. I might be able to go out and do so. I'm, I am going to be speaking to my CPN at some point this week, this week coming about what support she can help me with providing, like learning. And it's, I need to talk to my therapist as well because sometimes he says mental health can make you block out things if you're going to do a dramatic thing as well, but. Who knows, but that's where my life has just gone full circle. Where I wanted to, I was so ambitious, I wanted to be a paramedic. Then, obviously, that wasn't the case. That's why I couldn't be a paramedic because of my illness, mental health, and my physical health. Now, because I want to become a mental health nurse, and the reason why I'm so sensitive on that topic topic is because I've seen people get treated so badly through the mental health system, and I think. The need to really the NHS, no, the government really need to pour more resources into that and train up people properly. Be oh, belly scared me. <laughs> um, I think they really do need to crack down and sort the mental health system out because a lot of people are getting failed by that system, and that's the reason why I also want to help, be there to help. Um, but he's not. Let's, I need to talk to someone about it, to be honest, to see if there's any extra support I can get with with learning. I'm going to go now because I've been babbling on for 15 minutes and I'm in the middle of cooking tea at the same time. And Bella is a smelly bum. Bella Nutella. I call her Bella Nutella. 
It's not giving daggers. <laughs> anyway, guys, thanks again for watching, and I hope you uh, enjoy the rest of the evening and enjoy the sun while so we have it. How long we're gonna get it? So I don't know what that face was about. But anyway, thanks again for watching, and I'll catch up with you in the next video. Don't forget that hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and press the notification bell. And I'll see you soon. See you later. Bye bye.